and I'm going to begin. New report. And this one will be about the next video I'm going to ask you to watch. I want to talk with you, ladies and gentlemen, about uncertainty. In this class, we've been building models of models. Some of those models are stylized. They're thinking tools to help us think through if things were to interact in this, what is, what's the logical consequence, right? But others of them are designed, they, they, they're aiming to help us understand particular systems. I want you to help. I want, want you to think through what are some. If, if we have a model that we think is a pretty good model, or we we built it and you know we're fairly hopeful about the model characterizing some particular system out there in the world. Um, maybe it's transmission of tuberculosis and Saskatchewan's northern communities. Maybe it's, you know, uh, dynamics of mental health among uh, adolescents. Um, maybe it's aspects of uh, sleep and the ways in which uh, uh, sleep over time for an individual is shaped by uh, their diet, um, by caffeine intake, by, uh, by their, their physical activity and, and by their past sleep and by their uh, use of substances uh, such as alcohol or nicotine and, uh, and by their stress levels, et cetera. So if we were to build models like this and we, we have some, you know, we, we have reason to, we, we think that they're decently good and we're interested in, in knowing how reliable they are. What would be, if we want to assess how reliable they are, what would be some areas of uncertainty we want to think about? What are some areas where we might be uncertain about? Anyone? Where where is it that the model we might have doubts about that would cast our confidence in the model into doubt? Where where are some areas we want to be careful about that the model might um might be misleading us? Yes, Abby. Okay. Yeah, where do probabilities show up in a model? Yeah, look at a at a, a level of model description. Where might they show up? For example, the model, yeah, transmission transmission Good, good. So in parameter, right? And, and describing a parameter. What's another place? So I like, I love that. Great contribution, I think. What's another place uncertainty might show up? In a model. Uncertainty about what? Uncertainty about the parameters. Okay, so that's kind of what Abby was saying about, about the values, the parameter values that we were using. Uh, he, he mentioned a particular case, but it's it's in a parameter, so absolutely constant. Others? Yes. Maybe okay. like the game connection that might not actually be. Uh, so the model structure. Like what's connected to what and how? Where these flows go, right? For example, in a, a stock and flow model or in a state chart where these transitions go. Does that make sense? So, so that would be a possible area of uncertainty. What's another one? Besides where they where the arrows go or the flows or the transitions. What else might we be missing from our model that could be of significance? Yes, Sophia. Uh, this is kind of related to the model structure, but there's some factors that we're not considering. Exactly. Yeah. So factors. So maybe we're considering people getting infected and losing immunity, but not not population turnover, not death of infectives or death of, of others, or not births also coming in. And, so not having an open population, population where people are coming in and leaving. Um, 
like it. What other types of structural uncertainty? And probably the, the model structure might be might might there be uh issues with yes that'd be yeah we're, we might be missing whole states right maybe we need uh, an asymptomatic state to represent people who have COVID but aren't showing obvious symptoms from it. They don't know they're sick with COVID. They don't know they're sick with something serious. And so they may be, why, why might that matter? That they don't know that they're particularly sick. Yes, Sophia. Yeah. They'll behave differently. They may be circulating widely, right? They may not think to get tested. They may not think to isolate. Mm -hmm. All these are good reasons uh, that that might impact our, our model results. So when we build models, um, we seek to challenge ourselves. <clears throat> models are learning, and good models help draw out critique. They draw out um, understanding knowledge from others that can challenge the model, but in a way that fails forward, right, and moves us forward. Francis Bacon said, the famous philosopher, um, English philosopher, once said, and I won't attempt the Latin, but he said, truth sooner comes from error than from confusion. What, do you, what are you saying is basically fail early, fail off. Try something, learn from it, learn more quickly where you're, you've made a mistake, and do better. You provide the rug to do better. If you just sat back and didn't try anything, you might be smug and thinking you haven't made a mistake, but you haven't really, you know, um, nothing ventured, nothing gained. You haven't, you haven't, you haven't um, learned anything either. So, you know, you could sit back and just say, I don't know, but if you, if you want to really progress in your knowledge, you often try something and, and, Maybe it's it's just what's needed. Maybe it's not, but you get a better understanding of what's needed, and you learn forward from that. You fail forward, right? It's not that models are the truth, but models help challenge us to think more consistently, thoroughly, reliably, and quickly through the implications of our understanding or of our best guesses um, to advance our thinking. And one of the ways we do this is through a process called sensitivity analysis. Now, when it comes to um, the different sorts of models that we're working with, there are different sorts of sensitivity analysis. And I'm going to ask you, in terms of uncertainty, for agent-based models, there's a different type of uncertainty from what Abby and Tosin and Tyler and Mark and others have, have mentioned. What are those other Sophia me, uh, have measured and mentioned? What 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 other sorts of uncertainty do we have commonly in agent based models? So much so that a word is written on the blackboard already about about something that gives rise to that uncertainty. Yes. Okay. Uh, have, sorry. Agent agent uh, So agent agent interaction is. Often we don't know as much about it, so our understanding of it may be limited. And that's a source of uncertainty may come up in in the structure. But I heard also in capacity. Okay. Name? Uh Usman. Good. Stochastics indeed. Um so stochastics, why do I say they give rise to uncertainty? Can anyone say? Yeah, they give rise to emergent behaviors, but so you can get emergent behaviors from without stochastics, as we see from SIR Mark. Yeah, so we call it um, the agent may not be exactly as we predicated, but when the answer is great, we'll see a That's right. Behavior. That's right. And if we run the model many times, we may get what? Different results, right? And so you could say it's emergent, and, and we do get emergent behaviors because of that. So I don't want to dismiss that entirely. But we can get some emergent, complex emergent behaviors without that, multiple basins of attraction, lock-in effects, et cetera. And so all of these are important, and they'll, they'll 
play a role in the video that I'm going to ask you to ask you uh, to watch, and then I'm um, I'm going to uh, ask you to to run a model a little bit as a take home exercise to illustrate some of these concepts. But today we have something else to cover as well. Okay, so um, uh, Wade, could you um, would you mind uh, sending those online a copy of the quiz as a PDF? I appreciate that. Okay, um, let me unmask myself. So I'll don it and and then I'll circulate. Okay. Great. Okay. So the rest of the class is devoted to the quiz, and we will. And you to watch the video and discuss that next time. I'm going to ask you to watch for next time two videos, which bear on different sides of this, and we can discuss the relationship to one another. I'm going to ask you to review a video on sensitivity now, which is the way in which we will talk more savvy about how exposed we are to certain types of uncertainty, such as. Parameter uncertainty allows us to vary, for example, parameters or the structure of the model and see how contingent our results are on that, um, how, how much they vary with it. We'll also try to examine uh, which is the process of limiting our uncertainty by aligning the model with observed data. Okay. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Did I have to check out? Uh, I'm sorry. People can take a bit longer about it later. It's fine. Wait, were you able to? So, do you, do you want them to? Yeah. Um, Megan doesn't have to because she's in the grad version, but uh, you don't have to either because you're a TA. <laughs> but Jonathan and Mallory did. Yeah. Thanks.